Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the DNS service that's built into Maverick's server. Uh, if you remember last week we talked a little bit about uh, Simple DNS when I had you change your host name and use the wizard to set up DNS. And so as a result you'll have this uh, DNS that will probably already be set up if you did that uh, for your server. And for most home users that was fine. Uh, but today what I want to do is walk you through the DNS service and talk about it more in depth. Now, DNS uh, basically stands for Domain Name System, and that's basically the system that takes uh, words that we understand, like example.com, and sends them to servers to find out what the IP addresses are so that they can return the right result back to you from the server that you're uh, accessing that information from. So it's a, it's a way to, to make, make sense out of all of those numbers and all of those words. And it's very critical to server that your DNS functions properly. If your DNS isn't functioning properly, you'll have a lot more problems and uh, a lot of difficulty with your server. So what I'm going to do today is walk you through the service and show you how to set it up from scratch. So you can see the service is off right now. Uh, it's offline because I want to be able to set it up. Uh, once it's on, you'll see we'll have a green dot there uh, showing that it's up and going. Uh, in the settings area here, we've got forwarding servers uh, that we can look at. And let me just click edit here. Now, forwarding servers are IP addresses to servers that will look up things when your server can't resolve it. Uh, again, DNS tries to resolve the numbers and the names together. When your server can't do that, it will go on the Internet and go to another server to look for that uh, domain name resolution. Now, remember, for most of you that are home users, your DNS is uh, functioning uh, kind of like a split DNS. Your uh, server is handling the DNS inside your network, and then you have... Uh, uh, the other servers handling the DNS outside your network. And so you can put whatever names in here you want to. Uh, these names happen to fill in uh, based on what you've put in your router uh, on your airport extreme. And so if you go, if you pull up your uh, airport utility here and you go over to internet, uh, what you've put in here for the DNS servers will show up there. Now it's obviously not going to put its own name there because it already knows that. Uh, but here's the other DNS uh, address that we put up there. And you can put whatever you want in here. Uh, let me just uh, put this down here. You can put whatever you want in here. You can put in Google servers 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 uh, or whatever you want, as many as you want in there. But this is just uh, the backup for domain name resolution. Let me just click cancel. Now you can also perform lookups for. You see I've got only, only some clients or all clients. And if I just click edit here, uh, I can choose what the, who I want to perform the lookups for. Now, for those of you that may be running a front-facing server or you've got a hosted server, uh, you'll want to just check the server itself uh, with nothing else because you don't want to have uh, what's called an open relay, uh, which basically would uh, you know, cause you to be banned from certain server lists and things like that. So uh, you probably would just only want to check that. But for me, uh, I'm just doing a home one right now, so we'll do clients on the local network. Let's just click Cancel. So that gives you uh, what those settings are. Now, down here is where the host names are. And as I said before, this is the host name that was set up for us automatically. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete it. So as you sure you want to do that, yes, I'm going to delete it. All right, so now it's gotten rid of it so that we've got this. Now, one of the things I do want to do is I'm going to show all records. There we go. So you can see here that now we've got uh, a blank slate to start with. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, let me just go in here. Let's click the plus button down here. And you notice that now we've got this drop down menu here. And you can see we've got various records in here. I've got a machine record that I can add. You notice it's blacked out, blanked out right now. That's because I've got to add a primary or a secondary zone first. Uh, I will get to that in just a second. But let me just explain these. A uh, machine record is an A record. Uh, and so every server needs to have, uh, have an A record or machine record. You've got an alias record, which uh, is a C name record. And that's for your aliases. If you want example... Uh, two to go to example.com, you create an alias to point it in that direction. Uh, the uh, mail exchange record is an MX record, and that's what we use for mail. And I'll cover that more in detail when I talk about the mail service. Uh, the name server record is the NS record, and that's if your machine is the uh, primary authority for your domain. Uh, you have uh, NS records that you set up, and so that when, uh, when the servers do a query to find out who the authoritative server is that's yours, you will set up those name, uh, name server records. Now, there will be name server records automatically uh, created when you set this up, but for some of you that have front-facing servers or servers that are in a hosted environment, you might want to be the authority for your server. Most home users are split DNS, as I explained earlier, so the name server records aren't as important. 
uh, because they're not uh, registered out there uh, on the Internet. And then we have the service record, or an SRV record, and that's certain uh, services require records in your DNS for them to function. And so that's all of the records that you can set up. So we're going to add a primary zone just to get started. You can see it takes us to this screen. And what you want to do with the primary zone is you want to set up something that is uh, more general. So, for instance, uh, if your domain name is example.com, you'll want to use example.com uh, so that you can put other things in front of it, like server or www, because those will be A records. So I'm going to set up a uh, zone right here, and this is my primary zone. Now it says how long the data is valid for. You can set a time on that. Uh, you can also allow for zone transfers. You can also set up secondary zones if you want to, uh, if you've got other zones that need to be checked. But uh, for home users, this is pretty much what you want to do right here. So we're going to click Create. And so now, there you see, I've got my primary zone all set up and ready to go right there. Now, you'll notice I don't have, um, I don't have anything else under there, right? There's no host names. So I've got to come over here, and I need to create a machine record because we need a machine record for this to work. So now in here is where you would put your machine records. And this is where you would put things that go in front of the zone. So for instance, server, uh, you know, .example.com. Or you might put in something like www.example.com and make a machine record for that. So whatever it is that you want to set up. So right now, let's just, for me, I'll just use server. And let's set that up just like that. And you can see that it's already corrected it up above. And then what you need to do is put in your IP address. And this is the IP address of your server. You just put in the local one that you've got since that's the kind of server I have here. And I could put in some text in here as well to explain what this is, but I'm just going to leave that blank and click Create. And you can see now it's added my machine record. It's also automatically added a name server record for me uh, because it needs to have one of those in there. And then I've got a reverse zone here, and these are called PTR records. And basically a, a PTR record is a pointer record, and it's used to uh, help you determine whether or not it's really you on the Internet because uh, spammers can spoof IP addresses, and so they do a reverse check just to make sure it really is you and it's coming uh, from your server. And so if I just double-click on that, you can see that it shows my IP address in reverse on here. Uh, let me just cancel that for a minute. And you can see if I click the reverse map on here, it says it's going to resolve this IP address, my current one, to this particular name right here, right? And this is my uh, host name that I set up. And so it's going to resolve to that, and it's going to do the check to make sure it really is me. All right, so that's how those records get set up. Uh, if you want to see a name server record, we could also click on that. And you can see here's for this zone, here's the name server. And this is where you would put your NS records if you were uh, hosting your own name servers. In my case, since I've got it registered somewhere else, my uh, name servers are from my domain registrar because I have my website hosted on the outside. Okay, so that shows you how to set up the basic DNS. You've got that all set there. And like I said, I'll go over some of these other things uh, that we have down here uh, as we need them when we set up different services. But now I've got my DNS set up and ready to go. So all I need to do now, let me just... Uh, Click this down so that I've got that. You can see there's my IP address, got my host name. I'm going to throw the service on, and now it's set and ready to go, right? I've got the green light here and here, and now my DNS service is all set up. So now what I'm going to do is show you how to set this up on the outside with your domain registrar so that everything is pointing to your server so you can access it remotely if you want to. Okay, here I am over on my domain registrar. And uh, each of you will have some kind of panel that you'll be able to go in to edit DNS. Uh, depending on your registrar, it'll be a little different. I've got two here I can show you. Uh, first, I'll just show you Mac Highway. Uh, you just go into the simple DNS uh, zone editor here. And what you're going to do is just go in and create an A record uh, for your server. So remember, that's going to be the machine record. So that would be exactly what I put in before, right? It would be like, you know, server dot, you know, and put in what I had before. And then you put in the IP address here, and then you would click Add Record. Okay, now I've already uh, done that. I've got an A record down here that's pointing to my network. Now, it's important that you put in the public IP address uh, that's on your router, not your local one. So that won't be the 10.0.1.3 or any of the local ones. It'll be whatever your external IP address is. If you've got a static IP address, you put that in there. If you don't, you put whatever it is on your router there, and you'll just have to you know, check to make sure that doesn't change and those kinds of things. So anyways, that's one way to show you how to do it. Now, I can also kind of show you over here on Hover uh, the same kind of thing. Yours might look like this on your DNS panel where you just click here to add new. A lot of times they've got these wildcards here. That's what this little asterisk is, and that just means that anything that comes in front of your domain, right, if it's example.com, uh, will resolve back to uh, the IP address that you give right here. 
So uh, there's different ways that you can do it on your domain registrars, but that's how you would uh, set that up to get that going. Uh, you would also come into your domain registrar if you wanted to set the name servers to be uh, the name servers of your server. If you are uh, got a front-facing server, you've got one that's in a hosted environment, you would set up the name servers here so that your server is authoritative. Again, for home users, you're not going to want to do that or worry about that, so uh, you, don't have to, you don't have to do anything for that. Okay, so now let's. Uh, now that we've seen just basically how you set that up and where you put in your uh, A records, and the important thing to remember is you'll put in an A record for every uh, machine record you set up. So later I'll show you how you do that uh, if you set up services like mail and things like that. Uh, but now let's go ahead and test the DNS just to make sure that it's working properly. Okay, now to test our DNS, you're going to want to go into the terminal, and you might not use that very frequently, but you want to go into the ter terminal to uh, test to see whether your host name is resolving uh, properly, and we can also check our uh, reverse DNS to see if our PTR records are working. So to test the domain name, you're going to go sudo and type that in, and then change IP, and then with a space, and then with a dash, check host name. Okay, just like that, and you're going to hit enter. It's going to ask you for your password and then you hit enter. And what you want to see is this. You want to see your primary address. That's the IP address we have on our local network. Here's our current host name. Uh, there it is. Uh, the DNS host name, the same. And it says success. And that's what you want to really want to see is that you've got success. There's no need to change anything. And so it looks like our host name is working fine and resolving OK. Now, the other thing that we want to check is we can check our reverse PTR uh, records, uh, and if you wanted to check those out. And for that, you would just type in dig with a space and then dash x with another space and then your local IP address, just like that, and you hit enter. And then you're going to get this, uh, this answer back, and it's going to show you that here's the reverse uh, IT, we've, uh, uh, IP address. We've got a PTR record for that. It comes back with the answer of our host name, which is what we want. It shows this NS record that we set up in server. There that is right there. And it's showing that there's an A record for uh, our actual A, a machine record that we've got that points to this IP address. So as you can see, everything looks great. And these are this is what you want to see when you're testing this. Again, like I said before, the PTR records may or may not be as important to you, depending on if you're a home user or if you're using it on the outside. Uh, but that's how you test those things, and that's how those records are set up. So that gives you an idea of how to test it. So in this case, we know that all of our records are set up properly and our server is functioning well. So that's all I have for you this week on uh, the DNS service. Uh, there's a lot of things that could be covered on that, uh, but this was kind of a, a walkthrough uh, to give you an idea of how to set that up and to be able to test it so you know it's functioning properly. So I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.